Thanks, Paul. Okay, and just so you're sure, the title, Land of the Giants, it's not to do with my stature. And only comes to these conferences, I'm worried I won't see over the podium uh, or the lectern, but this isn't bad, actually. I can, I can see everything for a change. Uh, look, uh, yes, we listed last year. We've had a very successful 16 months, but that, that success and that journey is one that's been 20 years in the making. And if you take one message away from my short presentation this morning, let it be this. 20 years ago, uh, in the late 1990s, early 2000s, WMC was exiting its ownership of nickel mines in Cambodia. Uh, and it sold those to the likes of Minkor, Panoramic, and Independence, who've already presented, uh, very successful, set them up for life, uh, those companies with those acquisitions. At the same time, it was selling its gold business. Uh, and I was the last chief geologist for WMC uh, at that gold business and the first chief geologist for Goldfields who bought the asset. Uh, and at that time, there were four nickel mines that had already shut down, uh, so they couldn't be sold separately, and they got sold with the gold to Goldfields. Uh, and today's presentation is, is to tell you about those four nickel mines. Uh, they missed the last nickel boom, um, and, and quite simply, our goal when we listed, and our goal now is to replicate the success of those three companies, Independence, Mincor, and Panoramic, we have been successful. Uh, it's largely been on the back of a discovery we made at Baker. Uh, I'll take you through that shortly, but unlike recent uh, presentations, I'm not going to focus on Baker. Uh, the deal that uh, Paul mentioned settled a couple of days ago uh, with Goldfields, and I'd like to give you a little bit of detail on those new assets that we've just acquired. Uh, just before I do that, why were those companies so successful? Why is Cambala such a fabulous place to be? Uh, 1.6 million tonnes of nickel metal mines since it was founded in 1966 by Roy Woodle and diamond driller Jack Lunnan, after who the company is named. Uh, this chart shows you two pairs of bubbles uh, for, for each company. The smaller bubble is the amount of nickel that was mined by WMC up to the point of sale, and the larger bubble is all the mine that's been, uh, nickel that was mined today. So the difference between those two bubbles is the amount of nickel that WMC left on the table, uh, and it really speaks to the amazing ability of the Cambauda field. It's unrivaled. It's one of the world's premier nickel belts to keep on yielding uh, incremental discoveries, incremental extensions, uh, and if you look at the table on the right, you'll see that the four nickel mines that now sit within the London portfolio all sh shut in the, early, uh, in the mid 1980s, early 1990s. And as a result, they missed out on 10 to 15 years of WMC tenure, uh, and obviously the subsequent 20 years uh, that the juniors took the, the, the assets that they brought forward. And our goal is to have a second larger green bubble. They were substantial assets, a quarter of a million nickel tons came out of our four nickel mines. So you're looking at perspective view there down on the Cambauda Dome. Uh, Brett Lambert at Mincor talked about the dome this morning. Uh, we're on the southern half of the dome, where it's generally nickel rights at surface. Uh, the land of the giants refers to the big three, Otterjuan, over 300,000 tonnes of nickel, uh, Longshaft, over 200,000 tonnes of nickel, and next, Silver Lake, 123,000 tonnes of nickel. It was Cambauda's first nickel mine. Unsurprisingly, it was the first nickel mine to shut, and I put permanently in inverted commas, because obviously uh, London's wanting to have a say about the permanence of that closure. Silver Lake and Fisher, therefore, have missed out on 35 years of nickel exploration. Uh, and effectively, there's been no meaningful nickel, nickel exploration at Silver Lake and Fisher since WMC ownership. We're looking in plan view here uh, on the left, <coughs> Uh, the, the red polygon, uh, we've effectively got the southern half of the Cambalda Dome. The yellow outline, the yellow trace, uh, is the trace of the contact with, between the London basalt, the football basalt, and the Cambalda Camartite. All the nickel that's ever been found in Cambalda is at or close to that contact. Uh, the northern half of the dome is now consolidated by Mincor, as Brett mentioned this morning. Uh, they're a nearly a billion dollar company. The indentation in our tenure at the South End is held by a Toronto listed company, Corora Resources. They're Goldfields tenements, but they're held under sublease by the Canadians, and they're a half a billion dollar company. Those values speak to the, just the incredible uh, endowment that the Cambauda field generates. And the table on the right, again, is speaking to this time gap and this endowment gap between Fisher and Silver Lake, uh, which sits at around 24 kilotons per strike kilometer when you trace that contact. Uh, remember, they shut early, so they missed out on WMC production and WMC expiration. Uh, the rest of the dome is about double that metric. And notwithstanding that the rest of the dome had two very large nickel mines in it, the juniors that bought those nickel mines, Mincor and Independence, uh, relevantly, still then managed to increase the endowment of, those two, uh, of that field by a further 40%. So we've almost got a four times delta between Fisher and Silver Lake, which shut early, uh, and then the rest of the dome, the northern half of the dome that sits within Mincor, a billion dollar company. <coughs> so in 
So you can see why we're excited. As you'd imagine with WMC, and, and these assets ran for 37 years combined, uh, there's a wealth of geological information. On the left is a very early version of a block model uh, done by the draftees in, in the offices in, in Cambauda. Effectively, there's 150 to 200 metre geological cross-sections through there, representing two and a half kilometres of mineralised trend at Silver Lake. And on the right, a cross-section through the fissure deposit uh, showing 800 metres of continuous mineralised nickel contact. And importantly, there's 260 kilometres of historical diamond core. Uh, it's all should still be accessible. It sits in the Campala core yard, uh, and we will have access to that for our, our program. Again, back to a plan view on the left is a, a Chris Bonwick presentation from his 2011 Diggers and Dealers. Uh, this is just to talk about how we're going to approach the exploration on the ground. Uh, it'd be a three-tiered approach. We're going to look for new discoveries and we're going to use 3D seismic, and I'll talk to that in a second. Uh, we're going to do what we've done at Baker, and I'll touch on at Baker in a moment, but we're going to drill in the gaps that WMC left behind, where they identified mineralization, but they walked away from it. Uh, and we're going to access that historical core and convert existing historical mineralization to Jork 2012 compliant metal. And the plan view on the left uh, is from uh, Chris Bonwick's Diggers presentation. Uh, at this point, they'd done a 3D seismic survey, which is the inset in the middle of the image. Uh, I'll show you that cross section on the yellow line in a moment. He was very confident uh, those yellow dashed lines represent the trace of the long Victor South McLean Moran uh, ore bodies running directly south onto the ground that's now sitting within London Metals. Uh, and on the bottom inset, you can see there's a drill tadpole plot there. Uh, there's an area of two kilometres by one kilometres directly in that gap, directly where those yellow dashed lines strike, where there's absolutely no drilling. Not just no drilling since WMC, no drilling even by WMC. So you can see why we're excited about getting boots on ground at the Silver Lake side. That's the cross section. Again, this is public information. It was put together by Geoscience Australia in 2012. Uh, the, the 3D seismic and the slice through it picked up the McClay ore body quite clearly. Uh, and then in, on the right hand side, there's benches, slices through the, the seismic uh, work that in plan view, quite clearly, uh, according to the geoscientists at Geoscience Australia, Curtin University and Independence, picking out those mineralized channels striking south. Those reflectors that they picked out strike directly onto the ground that's now just come under London tenure. And the size of the prize, uh, we're looking for a McLean Moran, 72,000 nickel tonnes at 4% nickel mined by independence in very tough times when the nickel price was much lower than today, uh, made a lot of cash for independence as that uh, mine came to its end in 2016, 2017. Just lastly on the new ground, uh, this is a perspective view. Uh, on the left, you're looking uh, towards the northwest uh, from the southeast. Uh, it's an isometric of the Cambauda Dome. We've got WMC's shoot plan, which shows where they thought nickel trends were running on that contact. And you can see the red arrow showing them plunging uh, from the north to the south onto our ground where there is no drilling. Uh, and then the blue dashed oval comes across to the long projection, which is a, a hanging wall project, a hanging wall prospect at Silver Lake. It's about 600 by 200 metres. It's drilled on a broad 100 metre spacing, uh, modest widths, low nickel grade. But importantly, in those diamond holes, very often very narrow, very massive uh, sulphides present. Looks identical to how we found Baker uh, when we IPO'd last year. So on to Baker. Uh, I won't spend too much time on Baker in the short presentation. Uh, just keep an eye on that open pit, because on the next section, that's on the top of the, of the plan. Effectively, this is how WMC left Baker in the 1970s and how it was when we IPO'd in June last year. And that is exactly how that uh, Silver Lake hanging wall prospect looked on the previous slide. And I'll, I'll circle back on that in a moment. Uh, this was our first drilling after we listed. We stepped in on 40 by 40s and started getting thicker, better grades. Uh, gave us the confidence uh, and the ability to do a model, which we announced in June, just under 16,000 nickel tons, just close to 3%. And then the drilling that's annotated is drilling that we've done since, since we stepped into 20 by 20. So we'll update this model uh, in this quarter. Uh, the yellow call outs are the ones that caused a bit of a stir at diggers, 23 at 6.8. We then followed up that with 19 at 6%. And just the other week, we put out six at 11% or just under 11%. And I'll show you a section, uh, it's KL on that plan. And again, just emphasizing that these thicker, better grade uh, results at Baker generally sit in the right locality, but they're sitting in thickness 
outside the dune model, which is draped behind on this cross section. So exciting times at Baker. Obviously, we're confident that uh, the result we declared in June should hopefully improve in the December quarter, but we get to do that work. Uh, so we'll keep the market updated as that work reaches maturity towards Christmas. We've announced the metallurgical results. They're excellent. Uh, just focus on the flow chart down the middle. As I've mentioned, we've, we've delivered thicker, better grade results than the June model. As a result, the density is going to be significantly higher than we previously estimated. All of those three things are independent drivers of more metal. They hopefully will deliver typically higher recovery, and that puts us in a great position to be talking to offtake partners with a potential premium product when the mine, <coughs> when the resource is updated and the reserve is completed, hopefully first quarter next year. So just to emphasize, 12 months ago, Nickel Conference was our first conference after we listed. This is what Baker looked like at the Nickel Conference last year. That's what we've done in 12 months. And just to reiterate why we're excited about the new ground at London, that's that long section. Identical look, identical scale, identical drill spacing left by WMC, identical widths and grades of the original drilling and importantly, a real presence of narrow, massive high grade. And this is not deep, this is about 150 to 200 metres uh, below, below the lake surface at uh, Campbellda. So just finishing up, I think it's a testament to uh, just how excited we are about the new ground, but just how important the Baker discovery is to us that the, the other 48,500 nickel tonnes uh, in our inventory only gets one slide. It's all accessible off the foster decline. The foster decline is flooded. Um, we're permitting to dewater that mine, re-enter that mine, rehabilitate the decline, drill, and hopefully, again, improve the ability of these ore bodies to continue to yield extensional discoveries as they move forward. Uh, we'll keep the market updated on the progress of that permitting in our quarterly reports, uh, but it's business as usual at Foster, uh, and we'll, we'll get back in, in there in due course. Quick corporate overview. I'm really pleased uh, at the bottom there, Hayden Bartrop. Uh, the fact that we've been able to attract someone of Hayden's calibre from Gold Road. This is a nickel conference, so there shouldn't be too many gold people in the room, but everyone who knows Hayden in the gold business says they can't believe uh, Gold Road let him go, so we can't wait till he starts in January. And, and then of note also that the shares on issue, that incorporates the 21.5 million shares that we just issued to Snives uh, at the current market, at the current price. Uh, we've got an enterprise value of about $2,000 per tonne in nickel resource. Uh, I think yesterday Peter Harrell put a slide up. Uh, we didn't plot on the chart that Peter up. We were actually off the chart because the EV was too high to fit on uh, Peter's chart. We think that premium is well deserved. Uh, Minkle sits at a high premium. And, and we definitely think that the, the location of our tenements in Cambauda, uh, our discovery of Baker, the addition of the new ground, and, and our balance sheet in terms of having plenty of cash from the April raising puts ourselves and shareholders in a good position to, to drive that premium forward. So just to finish up, uh, it's a great time to be in nickel. You'll notice I haven't had any slides on electric vehicles. Uh, if you're in Cambauda or above a 1% cutoff, the head grade is typically going to be 3%. That's a great hedge against the nickel price. So we don't focus too much on that. The best thing we can do as a team is to find nickel into resource as quickly and safely as possible. We've got four mines that missed the last nickel boom, at least seven known channels. We're drilling aggressively. We're making discoveries. We're growing our resource base. And with the deal with Goldfields, we're expanding our asset base. Cambal is a great place to do business. I see James is presenting and putting on lunch. Well done, James. Uh, Shara Kulgali, fantastic support. He's really interested in what we're doing. He's really supportive. Uh, we're working with the Naju, uh, who are the local TOs on the Foster Jam project. It's a fantastic infrastructure. When we take people out to Cambalda, they just can't believe how many pipes and power lines, people who don't know Cambalda. You've got to remember, this has been continuously mined for 60 years. So if you're going to do business, it's a great place to do business. And then from an endowment point of view, there's nothing better than Cambalda. It's a globally significant camp. Uh, the assets are unrivaled in their ability to keep uh, providing extensions. And we've got four of them that are underexplored. So we think we're in a really good position to capitalise on what we think is going to be a very buoyant time in the nickel business. So thank you. We're a small company with big plans, and we think next year, 2023, it's going to be a pretty aggressive and very successful year for us. Thanks very much.